contact information. People can contact me uh, directly if they if they have questions that uh, that I don't answer. Uh, so we're going to work our way through it. And what I thought I would do was talk about each of the services or things that we have and explain to you what can be done at those. So there'll be some that interest some people and some that interest others. So uh, I'll start off by saying I, I'm an employee of the City of Fredericton. I've worked for the City of Fredericton for 35 years and I'm soon to be retiring with a little bit of luck. Um, and I work for the recreation team and there's a picture of us coming up and we are, it's our job to help make there be recreation and opportunities to play and be active for everybody who lives in Fredericton. So we have all sorts of facilities and places to play indoors and outdoors. And I'm just gonna go through them and tell you the kinds of things that happen there and then uh, and go from there. So uh, we're gonna progress and we'll see how this goes. If I end uh, up speaking too quickly, let me know. Uh, yes, please, Catherine, if it could be just, you know, like one sentence at a time or, you know, like, a so that they have the time, the interpreters to try interpret the sentence. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll try. All right, we're gonna go uh, to the first slide. And this is what we're going to cover in the presentation today. So I'm going to talk about who we are, the recreation group. I'm going to talk about outdoor activity spaces. Then I'm gonna talk about our indoor activity spaces and meeting spaces. We're going to do some talk about rec cards because people need to understand when they need them and how to get them. And then we're going to talk about programs and community activities, sort of out, not specifically city stuff, but other things you might be interested in. And then I'm wrapping up with some other ideas and suggestions. All well, good to go on. So this is a picture of, of our team. This is uh, me in the back. <laughs> um, and there, and there's, there's a whole slew of us and we look after programming for children, programming for youth, programming for seniors. We look after swimming pools, tennis courts, playgrounds, um, and all the work around that. So this, this is a picture to let you know uh, that there's a team of us. And, and this, is, this is the team. And I have a link here to show you our main uh, recreation web page. So if you went to the city of Fredericton's website, which is www.fredericton.ca, and I'll, I'll take you there. Oh. <laughs> You would start off here on the city of Fredericton's website, which is www.fredericton.ca. Because, because I don't speak any French, we'll start off in English. Uh, we cannot, we see, we still see the uh, Fredericton recreation in your photo. Oh, it didn't let you go back. Okay, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll go back to that then, not a problem. <laughs> Thank you. So that's just, if you go on the city's main web page and then pick recreation, this is where you would end up. And on that, uh, is it scrolling down for you? No, no we just, yep, go ahead. Picture, how annoying. We just see the picture still. Yeah. Anyway, so that is, I'm gonna try something else, just one second here. I'm gonna share the website instead. Here you are, I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to share. It won't let me share a website. There we are. Are you able to see that now and is it moving? Yes. All yeah, right. we so, can see the website. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So let's go. Let's just backtrack to the beginning here. Are 
Are you on the main page? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you go to if you go to the main Fredericton website, which is www.fredericton.ca, this is where you start. And then we'll pick English. And then the easiest way to get to all the recreation things is to go to these little three lines at the top and pick recreation. And that gets you to the page where you find all of our programming. On one side is our Twitter feed, which we'll talk about at the end. But if you look here, if you start off the top, it, it talks about the recreation cards and recreation accounts, which we're gonna talk about later. It has a list of all of our, of our fees and there's a link to the swimming pool schedule. And under this tab, it has all the different kinds of facilities that we have. We're gonna talk about each one, but this is where you could go to find out more. Let's say you wanted to know more about rinks and arenas, or you wanted to know more about ball diamonds. All, they're all listed there and you can click on those and there's more information, including, including maps of where they all are. And then this one is browse programs and activities. So this takes you to all of our programs that you can sign up for. So there's links to the playground program. There's links to pickleball demonstration. There's links to schedules for the walking track and schedules for swimming lessons, which we're gonna talk about them all, but they're all accessed from that main recreation page. These other things down here, the listing of other initiatives, the senior services and activities and the recreation newsletters, we'll talk about them all as we go through this presentation as well. And to make life a little bit easier, because we have so much going on, I'm just gonna close these tabs. There are some direct links on our main page. So if you wanted to see the public skating schedule, we'll just click there. If you wanted to see the swimming schedule, it's here. If you wanted to do aquatic fitness, which is exercise in the water, you would click there. And if you wanted the schedules for the walking tracks at our, at our two big indoor arenas, you would click here and it would take you right to those schedules. So everything that I talk about, you'd be able to find on the website by starting on this page. And I can review that after as well, but I'll stop the show. So that was just a little tour of our, our part of the website. And now I'm gonna share PowerPoint again. Sorry, you can see it, we're good? We're good, we can see the picture right. again. So this is us, that's John at the back with the, with the graying hair, he's gonna, he's gonna come and talk to you uh, a bit later and that's me at the side with the glasses near the flag. All right, so we'll go on. First thing I want to talk to you about. Let me go to the next slide. Here we go. So we're going to start off by talking about our outdoor activity spaces, and uh, there's all sorts of them. So this slide is look. We're looking. We're showing you the cross country skiing, and we groom cross country ski trails all over the city, but particularly the trails around Killarney Lake. So that, that's a picture showing that. And we also have the little guy on the skateboard. We have a number of skateboard parks, both indoors and outdoors. And I'll talk a little about them later, but those are just two examples of, of outdoor activities we have. And the, these are the links to the parts of that webpage that I just showed you, which has information about both of those. So if you went back to that main rec page and looked up, you would see there is a link to information about the skateboard parks. And there's a link to information about cross country skiing. Catherine, can I just ask you to slow down a little bit, please? Because I don't think the interpreters are having time to interpret what you're okay. saying. Right. Thank, thank you so much. Maybe can you sort of prompt me each time, like when to go on to the next one? Well, if you just speak in small segments so that they have time to repeat it in, in the language that they're interpreting. Okay. Catch me if, if, I, if, I, if I deter again. Yeah, just, just pause after you say a, a little piece and give them time to interpret and then okay. uh, continue. Thanks so much. Oh, no problem. It's a, it, it's a learning exercise for me as well. <laughs> of course. So uh, we're starting off talking about our places to be active outside. And this first slide is showing you that two of the possibilities are cross-country skiing and skateboarding. And 
information for everything that I'm talking about is found on the website that I just showed you. Next. This slide is about trails. And in Fredericton, there are more than 80 kilometers of trails. And there is a, there is a copy of the map on the city website. This is what the trail map looks like. And you can pick up copies of this lots of places in town. If you don't have any at the Intercultural Center, I, I can bring some over. Yeah, I don't think we have the maps here. I, I'll, I'll bring you some. Thank you. Along the trails in several spots, there are fitness equipment, and uh, there's, there's some fitness equipment in Henry Park. There's some fitness equipment uh, below the university that are set along the side of the trail so people can do exercises. And also, you can use the trail for a lot of things. You can use it for walking, biking, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, skateboards. What you can't use it for is driving regular vehicles. City vehicles go on it for maintenance sometimes, but regular cars and trucks do not drive on the trail system. It's for, it's for pedestrian traffic, for, for people and bicycles. Whoops, there's a lot of trails at Killarney Lake and lots of trails in Odell Park. I don't know if you can see that on this slide. And of course, one of the most popular parts of our trail system is the walking bridge, the Bill Thorpe Bridge downtown. It's, it's a spot that people love and go to all the time. It is a, a main feature of our trail system. Now, there's the boss. He's, he'll be in in a few minutes. Um, so that's just the, the trail system is, a, is one of the crown jewels of the city of Fredericton. And we are, our job at recreation is to encourage people to use it and to, uh, it, and to come up with unique uh, things to enhance its use. We all good with trails? Yes, sure. thank you. Okay, so we have a lot of parks in Fredericton. There are 138 parks. Um, not all of them, they all have different features. Some of them are just grassy areas to play in. 31 of them have, 31, I'm sorry, 51 of them have playgrounds in them. This, this picture is of the playground in Wilmot Park, one of the playground structures in Wilmot Park. Um, some parks are small, some parks are big. Some of the big parks are Wilmot Park and Odell Park. Wilmot Park has got some extra features at, uh, other than the tennis courts, it has the big splash pad. And it also has uh, some courts that have been set aside to play bocce and tatong on. So it's got some unique features. There's also Odell Park, which everybody is familiar with in the center of, uh, of the city, which has a lot of trails, a lot of beautiful trees. And it also has the opportunity to play disc golf, which I'll, I'll talk about a bit, bit later as well. Carlton and Morrell Parks are along the river, and they are a place that you can put a boat in if you need to, but they're also a spot to watch the water and people enjoy that a lot. 
The other one I wanted to mention specifically is the Botanic Gardens, which are also in Odell Park, but they're along the side of Odell Park against, against Hamwell Road. And it's a beautiful area of, of gardens that you can walk through. And they, uh, anyway, they're beautiful and they'd be a nice, it'd be a nice walking trip for people to make uh, from the center, I would think. So that is uh, just a little bit about parks and playgrounds. And, uh, and you can find that link on the main uh, recreation webpage. I showed you there's a bit that when you go into activities and you pick parks and playgrounds and it will tell you what, where it has lists of all 138 of them and where they are. Okay, we have a lot of courts. I was trying to be a bit funny with my title, courts, all sorts of courts. We have tennis courts, more than 20 of them, outdoors, basketball courts, pickleball courts, and beach volleyball courts. Most of our courts, you can just go and play whenever you want, obviously, when, when you're in the right season of the year, except when there's a tournament on. Some of the courts, like the beach volleyball courts, you have to reserve if you want to use them on a weekend or an evening because there's leagues that play there all the time. And I'll show you where you reserve them. So this would be the city's See, this, this is where they all are. That you can, can you see that? Can you see the map? Uh, no, it's just, it stays, I guess you have to keep on switching to show this, the, yeah. you know, I you will, to share I this. Will, I will just want to show you, go, I'll go back to the main, um, to the website to show you that. I'm gonna backtrack to show you where we are. So if you were on that main recreation page, you would click on view and book facilities. And then you, for this purpose, you would pick outdoor courts. And then it tells you what we have and where. So where the beach volleyball, where it is, the basketball courts, which you don't book, you can just go to any of those locations and play. The pickleball courts, which is the same, you can just go and play. There's a list of the sort of rules for proper behavior on the tennis courts and where they are. And here's a map which shows the location of the courts. And then what you would do, particularly if you wanted to use a beach volleyball court on an evening or a weekend, you would check to see if it was available first and you would do that. Here, you would look at it and you can see when, when they're booked. This is John that's just joined me, by the way. He's going to make sure that I stay on track. Hello, all. Hello, John. The links, I uh, have to keep going back to the website, but the links are not working well. And so I've been just doing this. But you, you can do that not only to book the beach volleyball, but if you were going to try and book a soccer field or a baseball field or anything, that's the same process. You just go to a different spot here. So you were doing the sports fields. <laughs> Show me where they all are. Cool. And then you would pick a facility by its name and it would tell you when it was booked and when it wasn't booked. And then if you wanted to book it, there's a form for you to fill out as well. And it works the same for each of the facilities, but also you could get a hold of John or I after and we could walk somebody through the process if they needed any help. We'll go back to the PowerPoint. It's in your chat. 
get no Western chat. All right, so that that was just we were talking about courts and all the different courts that we had. So we'll we'll go on to the. We have lots of sports fields. We have ball diamonds, which are for baseball and softball. And then we have fields where you can play soccer or rugby or football, ultimate frisbee, frisbee, cricket, lots of different sports that are available to play in our outdoor fields. What we do is we rent those fields to groups who then play those sports. But if you were interested in playing soccer or rugby or cricket, you got a hold of us. We could let you know who to speak to, to, to arrange to play with them. And that when we slow down, this, this, everything's been translated. You check your chatter. Right in the middle. One of the other things that we have, and that in the wintertime, is we have outdoor rinks. So they are open to be used free of, free of charge during the season, which is usually January, February, March. Um, and once again, on where I showed you on the website, there's a link that says where all the outdoor rinks are. And we uh, we update our social media when we when they're open and, and when they're closed and what and how what good condition they're in and we're going to talk about our social media feeds at the end. I didn't have very many pictures of outdoor rinks, so this is actually my daughter in this photograph, but <laughs> it worked for the sake of a photograph. So people can just skate and and they also sometimes play hockey on the outdoor rinks as well. We have a dirt jump bike skills park, which is tricky to say. And that's an example of one of our, of our staff people doing a trick there. Uh, that park is a lot of fun. It's located uh, near the Grand Harvey Center. And it's a, it's a fun place to go with your children. And in the summertime, there's staff there who can help people. John's little fellow's been there and had a good time. Yeah, it's a great location. It's, uh, it has different levels of... Um uh expertise so there's a space for little newcomers or a little uh you know uh what would you call them people that are just learning how to ride a bike beginners beginners uh, all the way up to experts as you see in the uh the photo um this young man is obviously very very good at doing this i wouldn't suggest that if you're not uh not used to riding a bike on big hills but but it's a it's another fun spot that we have. I'm just there's just so much. So there'll be some that you're interested in, some that you're not, but we're just showing them all. We have dog parks. And we have two of them. We have one on the north side of the river and one on the south side, one on the North side is in behind the Canadian Tire next to the rugby club. Home right near Home Hardware, John's right. It's right behind Home Hardware and the Tim Hortons, right back there. Um, and the, the one on the south side is near Grand Harvey Center. And it's a place where people can take their dogs and let them be off their leashes because everywhere else in the city, dogs need to be kept on leashes. So it's a spot to let dogs run around, but it they're fenced so it keeps the dogs safe. We have pools and beaches. So the city has four outdoor swing pools, one in Henry Park, Queen Square, Marysville and Royal Road. We have a, a beach that we look after in the summertime. We have nine wading pools and a splash pad. So these are all our outdoor 
swimming, swimming spots. We have an indoor pool as well, but we're going to talk about that a bit later. So you can, there are, there are swimming lessons at the outdoor pools uh, when you do have to pay for swimming lessons. Otherwise, the use of these facilities is free um, and is, is a lot of fun. And, we, and the outdoor pools and the beach uh, come with lifeguards, which is an added, uh, added safety feature. And the, lo the exact locations of all of these, you can also find on the, on the web pages that I was showing you. To we'll talk a bit now about our indoor activity spaces. So there's a lot of them, and a lot of them, we we work together with the schools to make them available, which is which is a really nice partnership. So this picture is showing one of the school gyms that we look after, and and this is the walking track at Grand Harvey, because it's really nice. What? So. In the summertime at the Willie O'Ree Arena, we have a, uh, an indoor skateboard park. It's called the Northside Youth Center. And it is a spot for anybody to come and skateboard. It's relatively inexpensive. And there are also day camps there and lessons. Oh. And there's other activities as well. So there's uh, for skateboarding and uh, scootering, uh, rollerblading, uh, there's also some other games, including like video games. That's and, right, like the table tennis and yeah, pool and, and, ball. and other things. So it's it's not just a skateboard park. It's also kind of a community center. And uh, it has, as Kate said, it has uh, day camps and training sessions, but it also has drop-in just for use. Um, and that schedule is also on the uh, on the website. And there's staff there. So if a young person wants to come, there is staff there to supervise them and make sure that things are safe. Then you can borrow some equipment as well. I think you have to have your own helmet. It's a great spot. You can also go and watch. It's fun. We have four indoor hockey arenas, two on the north side and two on the south side of the river. York Arena and the Willie O'Ree are on the north side of the river, and the Lady Beaver Book Arena and the Grand Harvey Center are on the south side of the river. There is uh, public skating, so time when anybody who wants to skate can go and skate at those arenas. And at the Grand Harvey Center and the Willie O'Ree Place, there is a walking track as well for people to, to walk for exercise. And there also are uh, meeting rooms that you can rent out for activities or uh, meetings. And the public skates and the walking track are completely free. Uh, there's a schedule on the website as well. Yeah, and we, we looked at where that was, but we'll, we'll review that again at the end as well. Are we good to move on? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, I believe everything is great. Thank you so much. And the speed is really going really well, the speed as well. Thanks. <laughs> You have no idea how hard it is for me. Yes, I understand. Thank you. So this is a slide we're talking about, our indoor swimming pool, the Fredericton Indoor Pool. Uh, and it is a spot, there are public swims that you can go to. So if you wanted just to go out for a swim with your family in an indoor space with lifeguards, you can go there, there is a fee for that. There is also swimming lessons, and the lessons can be from anything from babies right up to adults. Everything from learning to swim to becoming a lifeguard, they offer uh, instruction in all the levels. So, so it's a great fun spot, nice uh, fun uh, family activities to do. This is a picture of Odell Park Lodge. We have, we look after two lodges, which are available for people to rent for, let's say a family gathering or a party or a picnic. Uh, if you wanted to have an indoor space as well, we have a lodge in Odell Park. That's the one in the picture. And we have a lodge as well at Clarney Lake Park. 
And if you rent them, they are, there are staff there to, uh, to help you set up, take down, and who make sure the doors are locked and the heat is on and things like that. So they're great little spots to have, uh, have family gatherings or meetings. We have access because of a partnership with the schools to a lot of school gyms. I believe 14 right now, 13 or 14, John? I thought it was more than that, but it's, yeah. It was, so we have a partnership with Anglophone School District West. Yeah. Um, so we have access to two high schools, three middle schools, and all sorts of elementary and schools. Number of elementary schools. And as Kate has on the slide, the Nashville Access Fieldhouse uh, is a three court facility with um, a track and also an outdoor space for um, gymnastics or, or, or uh, activities like that. Um, the, the gyms are, are, able, are available to rent in the evenings during the school year. And in the summer, we, we normally run the uh, Nashville Access Fieldhouse, and there's drop-in hours there. Uh, there's also a weight room for weight training. Uh, and I mentioned before, there's a place to walk as well. And, and once again, the website that we were on at the beginning of this, uh, the recreation website, there's links to more information about those. We'll go back and look at that again at the end. Uh, and you can rent those facilities. So if you had a, a game you wanted to play indoors, you could contact our staff person, Pat, and he would look through the schedule and could help you find a gym where you could have your activity. And it, there is a rental fee for it, but it's not particularly expensive. This is a picture of one of our two senior centers. There's a senior center on the south side, uh, right near the uh, multicultural center uh, called Stepping Stone. And then there's one on the north side of the river called the Fredson Senior Center, which is the one in this photograph. And there's all sorts of seniors activities that happen here. This is a picture of carpet bowling, which is a drop-in activity that happens here free of charge on Friday afternoons in the winter time. But there's lots of things that happen at that center, and that's actually one of my job roles. So if you had any particular questions about that facility, it would be it would be me that you spoke to. All right, this is where we put John on the spot. We're going to talk a bit about rec cards. Um, and I'm, I'm going to give a little explanation, and then John can fill in uh, what I miss. So recreation cards are for use of our city fields and arenas. Uh, sorry? And out, swimming lessons and outdoor pools for people that don't live in the city or in the communities outside the city, which, which we have partnerships with. We'll show you a map in a minute. And if you live in inside the area that's included in the map, there is no fee for a recreation card. It's only people that live outside of that area that need to pay an additional fee. And that's really to help us cover the cost of operating those facilities, which is paid by the people who live in the city who pay city taxes. So the amount you pay for a recreation card if you don't live in, that, in, the, in the city area with our partners depends on the sport or activity that you're going to be doing. It's much more expensive for example, if you were going to be playing hockey or ringette than it was if you were going to be playing baseball. Um, and you don't need them if you're just going to use, go to our tennis courts or do any of the free activities or walk on the walking track or go to the parks on the trails. You don't need a recreation card for that. You only need a recreation card if you're going to be playing hockey or learning to skate or playing baseball and things like that on our fields. So this first link I'll take you to shows you the map. So the area in here in the map that's in that's in gray. Uh, we we're we're still I'm sorry <laughs> we're still on the uh, recreation cards slide. That link didn't work. Okay, I'm going to take you to that the other way. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, attention. Could you tell us? Yeah. 
I don't think that's right. Yeah. Can you see that now? That's much better. Yeah. So as the map shows, sorry, Kate. As the map shows, uh, Kate mentioned it's for city of Fredericton, but you can see that it's also a, a very large area all the way out to uh, Majorville to the east, uh, near Keswick on the west, um, Yoho Lake to the south, and out past uh, Killarney on the on the north side. So anybody that resides in where those gray areas are, those cards are free. And as Kate mentioned, you don't need them for free activities. It's more if you're involved with a sporting group. So for example, uh, Fredericton D District Soccer Association, uh, they require, require a rec card number. Um, and we have in the past, there's a number of ways to get them, but uh, in the past, and if somebody's interested, if you have a large number of of, um, of people that need to access these, uh, you can get a hold of uh, Kate or myself, and we'd be happy to you know come to a specific location and verify people. Um, it takes about two or three minutes, uh, and all you really need is a piece of ID that shows where you're living, or a, a, you know a bill or a, something that shows your your address and your name on it. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite simple. You can also book uh, an online video session with me, uh, or you can do an application online, and it's all very uh, very quick and painless. Uh, as long as you live inside the area, as Kate mentioned, they are quite expensive for uh, for ice sports, um, but not so for uh, field sports. So for soccer, or baseball, or softball, uh, they're they're much less inexpensive. But if you live in the gray area, they're free. And there's, not to get too much into detail, but uh, you may be aware that we're uh, entering into government reform uh, with the province of New Brunswick. So some of these boundaries might change in 2023, but as of right now, that's where our boundaries are. And you can see it's, it's, it is actually quite big. It includes Hanwell, New Maryland, um, I said Majorville, Yoho Lake, Pennyac. There's a, a number of areas that it includes outside of the city of Fredericton itself. And when it changes, it's only going to get bigger. It's not going to get smaller. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> it sounds it sounds complicated, but it's uh, it's it's actually one of the I'm not going to say benefits of COVID, but um, since COVID uh, started, we put a lot of this stuff online, so you can do it virtually instead of actually having to come to the office. But again, if uh, if your organization has a large number of people that are looking to access these, uh, we have no problem coming there and, and doing them um, at once. And it doesn't take very long. It's uh, it's a pretty quick, pretty quick process. So I think that covered everything. So I just was thinking about other things that might be of interest, and I wanted to show you the sports and leisure directory. So I'm going to leave the slideshow and take you back uh, to the website. Here, yeah. Can you see the main rec the main city page? Yes, we are on the website now. Okay, so I'll, I'll take you to show you these various spots. So we're going to go in in English again. Then we're going to go up to the top and we're just going to pick recreation. So we're on the recreation page now. And if you ended up with questions about the recreation cards, it's here, rec cards, fees, and service agreements. So you can find all about that there. But what I'm going to talk to you about right now is in this browse programs and activities. So if you go there and you go to listing of other initiatives, it's all sorts of other programs. And we'll, we're going to sort by, we'll do any. And we're going to go to, we're going to scroll down. This is a, this document, the sports and leisure directory 
lists all of the sports and recreation groups in the city that we know about. So it's a very long list and has all the sports alphabetically. So if you wanted to do archery, there's a, the name of the group and the website and the email address to contact them. Are you, are you able to see this? Yes, uh, yeah, we can see the template. So you wanted to go bowling, you wanted to join cheerleading, the cricket club. I mean, I won't do every single one, but you can see there's lots. Lots of martial arts, if you wanted to do judo or tai chi. Then there's some of the interesting clubs like the GTFO, the Outdoor Adventure Club. There's information about pickleball, rock climbing, roller derby. That's a lot. Yeah, and that, that list is probably longer now yeah i mean that i haven't updated it in six months so i would say there's probably more now than there was but it's not just sports it's also just activities uh, as kate mentioned um I, I believe we used to say it had everything from archery to yoga i'm just waiting to see till we get to the the whys that yoga is still on there oh, but, i'm sure yoga is still on there but it is uh there's a lot of nope. groups and Oh. I lied. It ends at volleyball. We don't have any yoga on here. Right. So if if you are a part of a group, um, like an active group that does you know certain activities, we would love to hear from you to put it on that list. Uh, we really want to be a place where people can go and connect with other people, the things they're interested in, um, and we'd be happy to add it. I believe there's no. There's no cost no, or there's no cost. And actually, there is a, a new group who got a hold of me, a cycling group called Slow Roll. And they're not in here yet. So I've got to, I think I think we have it under bicycling. So they, they would need to be added in here. Okay. So anyway, this is a great resource for, for families, for singles, uh, for anybody to show all the different sports and recreation groups in the city. Now there's more. There's more that we don't know about, but that this is most of them. Yeah, and these are these are all groups that aren't run by us. These are independent groups, right. I believe. So these are um, groups that are interested in like like baseball and archery um, that are running their own programs. But we just want to be able to connect uh, the public with them uh, as easy as possible. And a lot of them, for example, baseball, they run their programs on our fields, correct? Right, or the. Uh, let's say these active Fredericton co-ed basketball league, they play their basketball in one of the gyms that we make available. So we, we touch these groups because they use our facilities, a lot of them. And other ones we just know about because people in this office do a lot of recreation. <laughs> so I'll back up. That was one thing I wanted to show you. Okay. So if you want to find what, I mean, the other ones, we, we, you will be updating that maybe in the future. That's how we could see that. Yeah, we, we try and update that about twice a year. Okay. But also, if, if you're aware of a group that we don't have, let us know and we'll, have, we'll put it in the list update. Yeah, like, for example, we have, we do yoga once a week, we do, or twice, I believe, the women, they do that activity, and we have football, soccer, we're doing it on Saturday, so nice yeah maybe we can people engage together we would we would love to have a yoga group in there because that doesn't make me a liar because i always say we have archery to yoga so please send that along to us and yeah yoga sure. may be covered in some of the other sort of groups that yeah. are all encompassing are you able are, are we back on the sort of listing of sports and stuff again can you see zigzag on your screen right now yes okay so what i wanted to talk to you about nick i don't want to I seem like I'm going a bit backwards and forwards. It's because I don't want to lose track of what it is I wanted to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the recreation newsletters. So these are uh, documents that are put together monthly. We are a little tiny bit behind right now. And they are feature local clubs and the activities that they participate in. And this is, this is document is available bilingually. 
So this one is, what are we looking at? What month are we looking at? April. There's talk about the, the Chalmers. There's talks about the Trails Coalition. Talk about uh, the swim team, which is called FAST. It's got registration for its programs. There's a group called Park Run that does outdoor running in the park. So there is stuff about them, stuff about the tennis club. So it gives more in-depth information about some of the groups that are listed in the Sports and Leisure Directory. And that might be something where maybe every month we put some stuff that's going on in the multicultural center would be a neat thing to put in there. But it's, it would be something that would, your, your instructors might want to share with the classes that gives lots of information as well. It's a nice write up on, in April's on soccer. Still trying to get people to go carpet bowl. <laughs> There's things about the marathon. So that's another resource that I wanted to let you know was there. They talk about it doesn't have to be physically active. This is about playing cards and gardening. Just wanted to make you aware of those documents as well. And take you back to the main recreation page again, just so you know where I am. And I'm going to show you some other things in the listing of other initiatives. This first group is called the Wednesday Walkers. And it's one of the actual, most of the things that John and I and the rest of the workers do here is about helping other groups use our facilities. But sometimes we actually do some direct programming. And this is one of them. This is a walking club uh, that's held every Wednesday morning, uh, all summer long, where we go to different spots in the city. Yesterday morning, I had 27 out walking on the north side. So. It, the, it just explains it's free. And then there's a, a, the schedule is, is posted here for people to see what date we're walking and where we're walking from, where we're parking, et cetera. And it's a, it's a great way to learn about the trails. Um, I think we have it in here. I don't know if you talked about it already, but we have over 80 kilometers yeah. of trails. I'm sure Kate's going to touch upon that. But it's, it really is amazing once you, uh, you get on those trails and you realize how you can go from one part of the city to another. Um, there's a couple of areas that are a little more difficult to get through, but uh, for example, I live on the north side uh, and for me to bike into work is about 30 minutes and I go on all trails, including the walking bridge. So it's it's a good way to, uh, and something, uh, not, a, not all of them, but a large number of those trails are paved which is great for uh, for biking or strollers or persons with a disability for wheelchairs. Um, but also the paved section of trails get plowed in the wintertime. So it's a safe place to walk outside. And again, it's uh, it's a great way to get around the city. And, and some of these trails, uh, one of the ones Kate has uh, showing right there, that South Riverfront and Salamanca Loop, um, it's, it's right along the, the water. And sometimes it feels like you're walking in the woods as opposed to walking through a city. So it's uh, they're a beautiful part of our city for sure. I, I scroll to this one because this is where we're going to be next Wednesday. So if people wanted to join us next Wednesday, they would come park right next to the Lady Beaverbrook Rink on University Avenue, and we leave at 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesdays. And I can forward a copy of this schedule to you, and it is available in both English and French. Okay. So that's the Wednesday walkers. This is about the Northside Youth Center, which we already spoke about. These are day camps, which are eco, the nature eco day camps are children's day camps, which we offer in the summertime uh, for two weeks at the end of the summer. And it's, it's childcare in, in a day camp that we offer in Odell Park and Clarny Lake Park. So that's just another program we offer. Zigzag is one of our one of our favorite programs and is very very special. It's a, it's a program which is free, which is offered in parks all over the city um, for children age six to twelve. This is a this is the schedule. So you can see this week they're at Park Street, Gill Ridge, Reading Street, and Lincoln Heights. But we try we we get all around the city, and you know in seven weeks we get to. 7, 4 to 28, 28 different parks. And the activities they do in those parks aren't just, you know, it's not just playing and running around. They also do crafts and art and reading this year. And reading. Yeah. And uh, the only the only thing about this program is it's not a it's not like a daycare, it's not a drop-off. 
the children either need to have a parent that stays with them or they need to be old enough, like a 12 year old to, uh, to go home uh, on their own. Yeah. Um, but it is free. And as Kate mentioned, it's all over the city. Um, but it's a really good program and they have lots of uh, materials and games and, you know, sporting equipment and uh, other things to play with the kids. My favorite game is the screen game where the kids run for as long as they can, yelling as loud as they can. It's, uh, it seems to be one of the kids' favorite games too. Screen run, yeah. Screen run. Game. yeah. But it's a good way to get your kids out and for them to be tired by the end of the day so that they're uh, ready for bed at night. And if, if you go to the park with your children near where you live, your children will meet other children who live in the neighborhood. So it's a great way to make friends that live near you. There are, there's two staff at each park each week and you can tell the staff because they wear very bright orange shirts. And th this schedule is available on the website in English and French and I can also send you copies of it. So ZigZag is a great little program. What's the time for the zigzag? I'm trying to see it. I might have missed it. Uh, Nine until 12 and one until four. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And it says that on there, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It, <laughs> as I mentioned on there, so that, as Kate said, so nine until 12 and one to four. So that's why uh, I mentioned that it's not a, a drop off daycare um, because at lunchtime there won't be any supervision. So you have to make sure that the children are able either supervised by parents or guardians or they're uh, they're able to get home on their own and come back for one o'clock and so they can come back that was my next question they can do the morning and the afternoon they just have to go home for lunch absolutely absolutely and the okay. parent quite often will have parents come and the parents will just sit at the picnic table somewhere else in the park and read a book exactly and or, then, yeah, and then if the children need to go to the bathroom or aren't feeling well or anything, that the parents are there are there to take them are, to take them home. The the thing is with the, this is more like a, we're providing a friend to play with you in the park, so the children don't have to participate in the activities if they don't want to, which is why parents are home need to be close by. Yeah, and yeah, to your to your question about being able to go all day, you can. Uh, obviously, the last two years it was a little different with COVID and ratios and how many kids we were allowed to have at one point and you know but that's all uh we're back to uh we're back to normal operations now so it's it's great and, and parents can also engage in some of the activities and play um but as kate mentioned it is a nice opportunity to bring your your uh your child to the park and get a little rest while they're they're running around and playing so perfect thanks, thanks. That's zigzag. I'm going to go back and just scroll down this. So swimming, are you seeing swimming instruction on your screen? Yeah, yes, we see the website with it. Yeah, swimming instruction. So spoke to you about that. The other the next program on the list here is called the Mayor's Activity Awards. And that's a, another free program and it's for children aged three to 12. And it's a program that you register for and you get emailed a little chart of activities for children to do. And as they, as they do them, they earn points. And based on the number of points that they earn, they can get a, a bronze, a silver or a gold award at the end of the summer given to them by the mayor. So it's kind of a fun little way to keep your children being active, but you don't have to take them anywhere. They can do the activities in your backyard. And the contact information is our staff person called Adam Grant and his email and phone number are listed here if you have any questions. So this is out of season, but in the winter time, we teach people how to make rinks in their backyards. And we have a, a outdoor children's run in the wintertime as well. This is another activity challenge that happens in the fall. The Living Library is an, a program which happens that we partner with the library um, where people tell their stories. But it reminds me to tell you the library also has all sorts of recreation and sports equipment that they will loan out. So with your library card in the wintertime, you can go to the library here downtown and you can borrow snowshoes. In the summertime, you can borrow skateboards. 
You can also borrow bags of activities you might take to the park that would have a Frisbee and a ball and things like that in them. So they have a lot of, they're a nice partner of ours and they have a lot of, of things you can check out that aren't just books. So that's a great little partnership and was one of the ones I wanted to, to talk to you about. Humble Cafe is similar. It's another library partnership. And that's COVID. It should have been taken off. That should be taken off. And that should be taken off. Yeah. Some of our stuff's a little, a little outdated there. I can adjust. So I'm just going to go review where the schedules are. So we, we're back on the main recreation page now. And if you go to all browse programs and activities and go to the all programs and activities. This is where the schedules are for the walking track. This is where the schedule is for public skating or public swimming. For if you wanted to take swimming lessons for the for registering for the day camps, attending a thing that's going to happen, I think, on Friday, which is a roller disco. Next Friday. Next Friday, not tomorrow. No. Tomorrow we're busy with Canada Day. Correct. It talks about the we have a uh, courts for badminton and pickleball which are available to rent at some of the gyms. So a lot of those services are all are all listed on this page. And I want to figure out what I missed. Back to the main rec page. Main rec page, yes. So I don't know if Kate talked about this or not. Uh, I think she mentioned it earlier. On the right hand side, it has our uh, our social media. Right. So we do use that quite a bit. Uh, especially for, uh, you know, weather um, related closures. So for ball fields, ball diamonds, especially if it's raining, usually they close, but that information will get updated on that, on the site or on Twitter or our Fredericton Facebook page or Fred Rep. This is the Twitter feed. So this is actually a picture of our Twitter feed. And the English Twitter feed is at City Fred Rec. Yeah. But for any information that's coming out fast, uh, that's not on our website, will go on this site. So it's really convenient that you can see it on our website, or you can also, um, you know, be on Twitter or Facebook uh, to see that information. And usually it gets updated around three o'clock in the afternoon for uh, field playing conditions. And then, as Kate mentioned earlier, in the winter time when we have outdoor rinks. Um, ski trails. Yeah, the ski trails get updated on yeah, there as well. Cross country yeah. ski trails. Uh, will also get updated, um, but this is also um, through the, the the Facebook page, especially. There's uh, an ability to, to contact us directly, and it's monitored Monday to Friday, eight fifteen to four thirty. And uh, again, it's Adam Grant that you met, that Kate mentioned with um, with Zigzag and those activities, and he's pretty good at getting back to people. But it's also nice for us to know. To hear what's going on with your groups and uh, to connect. So the the Facebook page is. Just show you. If you don't have anything in there, it's done. Because it's not my page. All right. I'm going to take you back to the PowerPoint here just to make sure that I haven't missed any of my. Uh, my critical points. Well, let's see. Let's see if my link will work. I have to jump out and share. <laughs> no, my link won't work. Anyway, so our Facebook, if you if you went to look for it, is called Credits and Recreation in English. That it shows the link right below it, right there. Um, the only other thing I, I wanted to mention before I open it up for questions is the fact that we try, often help people create new programs. So um, John was quite involved a few years ago when with the formation of the cricket club and helping them find us a place to, to have a field because cricket was a real growing sport in Fredericton. And we have another staff person here who has really helped develop the sport of pickleball in the city. So if there were other sports that you noticed was missing from our sports and leisure directory or that you, you thought there was demand for it that isn't available right now, we are certainly very keen to help you uh, get that going. And uh, that's really one of our main jobs is to, is, to, is to help get things up and running. And then usually, for instance, let's say hockey or soccer, we help get a program like that up and running, then a club is formed and looks after it. 
and then we move on to help get something else going. So I think that's everything. Yeah, and like Kate said, we we love to hear about new sports um, or new activities, and so don't feel shy or don't be shy to contact us because like cricket is a great example. Uh, cricket, I started working on cricket I think in two thousand and twelve. And we're actually, we actually just finished the feasibility study for a brand new field or a, a retrofit to a field. But um, there's a lot of activities that we may not be familiar with. I mean, I'm a, I was a baseball player and a hockey player, but um, there's lots of things that, that we're not aware of. And we'd love to hear your feedback and, uh, and on those things. Yeah. And to help. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to stop the screen sharing so we can see everybody. Thank you so much. Lots of information. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. It's true. It's a lot, uh, but it's it's nice. Like uh, we, I, at least we know where we can go search for it and what we can find. And I believe if if anyone uh, who is participating have questions, they can go back. Maybe we can share this uh, YouTube also uh, the the presentation on the YouTube channel that we have, so that people can can see it again if they they miss something. Absolutely. These are these are way more fun in person. Of course. <laughs> Being Kate for doing for a number of years now, I think, and it's 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 difficult to do these and not be able to see the faces. Um, yeah, I, I'm, well, we can suggest. I mean, if people are comfortable, if you would like to say hi and show your face, that would be a nice just moment at the end. Maybe if anyone is not shy to be in. <laughs> In person. There's she. Yes, we have. Hey, Shira. Yeah, we have classes also participating. So there might be groups for the class. So anyone has any? Uh, we can't hear you, Sheila. We do miss the in person, but it is great to look at your website as well. So people know how to, to find things. So uh, that's useful for that aspect of it. So that's great. Yeah. And I don't know if Kate mentioned, I think. And maybe I'm not, maybe I don't have the information, but are we not updating our website? We're, there's good, yes, there's going to be a new and more easy to navigate website fairly soon. Because it is, there's a lot of information on there and it's difficult to put it in one spot. Um, I don't think Kate mentioned the, uh, the, all those schedules that you were seeing is all through a company called Amelia. It's our recreation scheduling software. Um, so there's, you can see it either from the, uh, you can either see it from the website or you can actually see it from the Amelia.com is, uh, in just Fredericton and it has all the information there too, but there's a lot of, a lot of stuff and it can be, it can be overwhelming, but so we're also available to contact us directly if you need any help with anything. Sure. Absolutely. Any, any questions? Any questions, anyone, before we say thank you and goodbye? <laughs> Seems probably people are thinking about all these activities. <laughs> thinking fun. about a long weekend, I think, Sharba. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're dreaming of that. <laughs> it's going to. So uh, I hope if you have any questions, uh, we, you can share, you can send up send them to us by email and then we can follow up and uh, I hope you'll be able to enjoy any of the activities that you like was shared with us today and thank you so much for your presentation um, and hope we will see you again uh, maybe another six months maybe when the weather changes yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to share the yeah. other things new things as well thank you guys thank so you so much, much. Thank you, Sorry, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a good Thank day. Thank you very much.